Huawei. You have the agenda before you as permitted. Any corrections or additions to this agenda? To the public? We have a motion by Oba Andrew. We adopt the agenda as printed. Second by Lisa Best. All those in favor say aye. 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 In the opposition, motion carries. Agenda is adopted. Also, you have two sets of minutes before you. One from the regular session of August the 4th. Any corrections, we'll vote on together, but any corrections uh, or additions to these minutes. Also, the special session of August the 20th. Any corrections or additions to those minutes? If not, then we have a motion to accept both of these sets of minutes from previous sessions. Dr. Dust first, I mean a motion. Danny Hancock second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries. All right, moving into committee reports, we have Ms. Linda Henderson of the Executive Committee. Good afternoon. Um, the Executive Committee, can you hear me okay with this on? The Executive Committee met on Friday of August 21st, 2020, and the committee met to consider uh, three items. The superintendent search procedures and timeline, the application form, and a proposed advertisement. And it is the recommendation of the executive committee that the board approve each of these items as recommended. And now I need to know what is your pleasure, the board. Are we waiting on the motion? Yes. yes. All right. For everyone, I would like to uh, propose that we approve as written, with the exception of one change. And I'd like you to look at the change that I'm proposing. And it's found on page three, the last page of that three page three. And so my motion would be that we approve everything with the exception of a change on item six, if you will find item six, it says the interviews of selected candidates will be conducted by the full, full, full board, and then I'd like to delete the words after that down to the word jury. So the number six corrected item would read the following. <clears throat> The interviews of selected candidates will be conducted by the full board during the period of October 19 through 21, 2020, and succeeding days if needed at a time to be determined. So we're just taking out everything after the word board and stopping it before the word during. Do you want me to read that again so you get the context of it? Yes. yes. All right, item six, read closely. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say delete. I'm just going to read it the way it is if you delete it. The interviews of selected candidates will be conducted by the full board during the period October 19 through 21, 2020, and the succeeding days, if needed, at a time to be determined. That gives us the option of different types of interview that we would like being standard for each one of the applicants. Does that make sense? Okay, that's my recommendation uh, on approval of this item uh, 5.1 and the changes that are listed on item 6 on the last page of that document. That's the motion. My motion. Right. We have we have the motion the, the approval of the superintendent search procedures and timeline with the change in item number six as written. And that's the only change. The rest of it is as as it is. is. Okay. Everybody understands this. Any comments from the public on this item? Board members. We have a motion. 
I'll second. I'll second by Hunter Smith. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. <coughs> Both up. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any opposition? Motion carries with a unanimous, unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's All right. Moving into the Finance Committee. During this time, I need to declare that we will be in a public hearing at this time. Ms. Lisa. During the meeting of the Budget Committee, Finance and Budget Committee, we uh, discussed things uh, pertaining to our budget, and I would like to have Ms. Duke explain those things for us. Again. Again. Okay. Um, uh, at the Finance Committee meeting, we presented the budget to the uh, committee for recommendation to the board, and the budget <coughs> the budget includes uh, total revenues uh, budgeted of eighty two point three million, total expenditures of seventy eight point seven million, uh, other sources and uses of funds netting out to uh, a total of uses of two point seven million, which about two point five million that is true funds being deducted from the MFP to fund students who live in Lincoln Parish but attend schools in other districts. Um, we have a net change in our fund uh, balance and for all funds combined of $835,965 for total, total Indian fund balance for all combined funds of $28.8 million. Included in the budget are changes that were made because of an increase in our MFP funding. Uh, we are realizing approximately $1.5 million increase in MFP due to not necessarily student increase in student population, but because of the difference, the change in the makeup of our students. We have more at risk, uh, economically disadvantaged students and uh, special needs students who uh, qualify for additional funding in addition to the decline in our local uh, sales tax base, which uh, qualified us for additional increased funding in on uh, under the MFP uh, overall on the level to the government. Uh, we have not budgeted any increases in property taxes in the general fund. Uh, that's going to remain level outside of the funds uh, that will be renewed by voters uh, that will see an increase in uh, those collections, the 90, uh, 2000 Amber and the Shoe Grant um, District MO uh, from the election that were held in the past. Um, about we're budgeting an estimated 20% increase in expenditures for substitutes in the general fund uh, just because of potential absences due to the um, uh, pandemic among our staff. Um, we are realigning some expenditures between funds in order to um, eliminate the transfer, the number of transfers we're having to make between funds to support our operations. Uh, and uh, we also reduced expenditures in the general fund of about 1.2 million due to staffing reductions that were implemented the start of this year uh, of, of approximately 27 positions uh, across the district. Um, so with that, this best, that's the presentation um, of the budget for uh, Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you one question. Could you repeat again on June the 30th, 2020, how much money we had to do decline or reduce the monies for both? Significant staff and support staff. For um, you're talking for the salary supplement. The salary supplement, yes, ma'am. Okay, so the salary supplements, uh, as you know, uh, in June we had a decrease in our salary supplements uh, because of the decline in the sales taxes that were collected. Twenty 
2021 budget. As presented. Okay. All right. Discussion on this item. We have a motion from the committee. Does not need a second unless I want anyone. Betty Hancock. Okay, this is a roll call vote. Yes. Mr. President. Yes, excuse me, Mr. I guess this is a part to the point to ask this. There was some discussion. Ms. Duke mentioned some uh, positions that were being eliminated. Could y'all uh, 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 elaborate on that? Verse 20, the, the, the budget that ended June 30 versus the new budget, what kind of what kind of numbers were we talking about? And uh, what were they? Last week in the school year right now, it's about 27 positions. Uh, it's a combination of certified and uncertified staff. Um, I, think it's 20, I think it's 22 certified and five and what will that put the totals? Roughly what you total. Total number of savings. Total, total savings. savings. No, no. Well, no. I mean, what? Uh, uh, there's about 900 employees total. I mean, what? What? Yeah, it's, it's from what to what? Total, but you're you're only reducing certificated. So we probably have over around 600 to 650 certificated people. So we're reducing that by 22 in effect. Okay. And then uh, the rest of the numbers had to do with uh, not certificated, which will make up. Uh, I have, I probably have that number actually in the booklet. Um, it is approximately 795 full-time employees is where for request. Okay. And yeah, that's for 2021? 2021. 795. There's still some that's, changes that's going on, you know, through all of these. Right now, 27 is what you're saying from, from what you had last year. Okay, any part time? Uh, yes, we do have part time. No, I'm talking about reductions. Um, well, we, have, we don't count those because part time is not board hired, and so they have to reapply every year for the Okay. And so uh, it's just like a power up. We did a power up school that didn't come back. All of it was done by attrition. So out of the 27 positions, uh, all was done because somebody decided to come back. We didn't go in this far somebody. So uh, it does not include the number of positions that uh, we had that were, in fact, part time or not, not board time. There has been reductions in uh, part time staff, you know, payroll positions. Uh, there have been no additions to payroll staff that have been reduced. So that is one of the reasons why we have not included Okay, you, uh, this was by attrition. Did you eliminate any positions? I mean, uh, uh, you might say you had five English teachers or whatever. And did, did you did you reduce any and, and to go cut back to four or something like that? Or yeah, have any much positions much. been eliminated? Yes. What we did, we get principals in and tell principal, okay, here's your allotment of teachers that you need to reduce and by attrition if possible. And so what they decided to do and who they decide to uh, eliminate is not based on the type of teacher necessarily as it is what works for that school. So it may be an English teacher in one school, another school may be a math teacher, it may be a social teacher, so it varies by school. So no, no one subject area. Well, that was just target. an example. I mean, the, the point, you know, a lot of times, you know, you say we, uh, if we eliminate Personnel, but the position just stays unfilled for some period of time, and then when, you know when the money starts coming in again, you, you fill it. My question is: Is were they were were the positions eliminated, as, as well as the personnel? The positions were eliminated at this time. Okay. I mean, down the road, I mean, they could reinstate painful. them. Yeah, yeah sure. it was painful, but as you get to a certain point, and you can add those positions back, certain way like. Okay.
new budget is adopted. All right, we will go back into our regular session now. No unfinished business, new business. Adopt resolution authorizing the superintendent to sign the uninsured motorist form. Please don't have that. Okay, um, this is a recurring item that we bring to the board um, to kind of give permission to uh, for the superintendent to sign the uh, uninsured motorist application form to uh, reject uninsured motorist coverage on our school board on vehicles. Um, with that, the resolution is attached. It has to be a form um, that's signed and submitted and that we have people on record in case there's any claims for uninsured coverage uh, that comes against the school board so that we can depend on that. And with that, we'd just like to put your permission to do the resolution to grant the form to the school board. Yes. 
approximately 77%. Average, well, I'm sorry, the average monthly collections uh, for this current month is about 70, uh, seven, seven tenths of a percent of uh, what collections were uh, for average for the year. Um, the total expenditures for fixed costs, uh, plan administration for the year is 2.3 million, uh, and compared to total claims expense at 4.4 million overall. Uh, it was uh, like a war zone again this time. Uh, 
Uh, so we're hoping to have that completed tomorrow. The city has been very good to work with. The energy has been good to work with. We still have some bus routes that uh, we uh, cannot fully run. Uh, we ran practice routes today to see if we could, and we couldn't get to certain places. So hopefully after tomorrow, we'll be able to serve food and run our bus routes completely. Uh, we think we have internet set, I think, for now, finally up. So what it means is I think we can go back to virtual to the extent that kids can receive the instruction. We think on our end, we can give the instruction. So our goal will be to begin Wednesday. Uh, in spite of uh, the things that have gone on in the uh, district here, uh, as far as the hurricanes concern, I think we're very, very fortunate. We're not going to have enough to file an in to meet our deductible interest plan. So that, that is big when you consider some districts have uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars associated with that. Um, I do want to mention too how proud I am for our school leaders. So we do have some excellent principals in the district and how they've handled this and how the decorum with which they have handled themselves, how they have communicated with their staffs along the way has been very impressive. And so uh, just a uh, word of uh, commendation, especially to our principals and assistant principals in this process, because uh, everybody's anxious. I mean, we have our issues without a hurricane, uh, but then that go through this as well, COVID, schools being shut down, the angst that some people have about their relations, all of that combined on our school leaders, uh, they are handling that very well. So I do appreciate all of our uh, uh, principals, assistant principals, guidance counselors that make it possible for us to have a sense of calm in this process of a difficult time. So thank you to this board for being patient with us. I think uh, we will have to, we're probably gonna get to the point this year for the first time in a long time, we have to make up things. Because by being out tomorrow, I think that put us at half a day left for the school year. I mean, almost inevitably, you're going to have a half day or a four day here and there. So, uh, because of what, that's okay. We'll just tack it on the end and we'll make it happen. So, uh, thank you for all that you do. And uh, I do want to thank our community uh, because we've got a lot of compliments from uh, people in the community. Uh, the community stepped up once again the last time and we passed the sales tax. That's going to help our budget situation down the road in some ways going to be more beneficial to our teachers. Well, again, some of the teachers that we lost, we think this past year, we're going to have them back. Uh, so we're looking forward uh, forward to that. If they can find a job with, us, but with the cuts that we went through. So uh, that, is, that was a necessary evil to uh, have those uh, cuts by attrition. Uh, but it resulted in our, that, plus the in increase in the MFP, those two main factors led us to have a budget that's uh, right at uh, a little over 800000 in the box. So it's been difficult to deal with the last two or three years because of the reduction in sales tax and reduction in MFP at the same time. So hopefully we're over that hump and uh, we'll continue in the upper frame. So again, thank you and I appreciate uh, uh, this opportunity to explain. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Any questions from Ms. Melissa? Comments? Ms. Nesta, can you tell us um, how much money you're going to Yeah, we talked about it a little bit last time. Uh, uh, you, you can make a case, and if you go back and look at the numbers, high school by high school by high school, that we're number one or number two. Uh, Jeff Davis, I think, is the other parish that uh, is in the ballpark with that. But uh, when you look at the overall numbers of those schools, it's extremely impressive. I'm just going to use an example. Oh, Mr. Guys, see, maybe I can't use one of parish tonight as an example. Uh, but I just want to say that, uh, for instance, uh, Mr. Durr, help me with this, I think, well, West Monroe High School, as an example, mm. would have a graduation rate of 75, 76 percent? Okay, okay well, good for them. And then Ruston High, Salisbury, and Shudrick are 95 and higher. So that, that is, a, I can't tell you all unusually, it's very strategic how we went about that. And the fact that that's happened, again, is a credit to the principal, the credit to Mr. Durr and company to help make that possible. Uh, because our schools are educating our kids. We have to, they have to pass the same test as everybody else. And so, uh, and one of the important, most amazing things is that our economically disadvantaged kids are graduating at a 94.7% rate in a four year period. Staggering, that's probably the highest school year. And then you have uh, our, our African American kids are graduating at a greater than 95% rate. And in uh, graduation rate. 
uh, as are our Caucasian kids, as are our other minorities. So uh, that, that's almost unheard of, and we're appreciative for all the work that goes in. So again, these great principals, excellent guidance counselors, and teaching staff that really care. They don't let a kid say, I'm not going to do that in good way. They get up and say, hey, no, you are going to do this. And you get a little hard-nosed sometimes, but uh, I don't know about y'all, I needed a hard-nosed teacher every now and then whenever I was in high school. So. It always started out with the beginning. So. It, starts, it does. It, it starts with that all the way through, and it's, uh, you're right. I know all the Andrews and Mr. Mills said can remember times before AC, boy, five days and all the without AC. <laughs> it still makes you appreciate it. <laughs> 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 but, at least the best. I'm at the motion to adjourn.